Yeah. Okay, so it's, uh, you can get it on your laptop or you can download it. It's about 2.49, I think, on your phone. You tell it exactly what you're eating. All the foods are on there. It's amazing. You're all different portion types. It's so easy to use. And it breaks down macronutrients, micronutrients. Everything is on there. Um, because I mean, I know, I, I think I, I have flaxseed um, yeah. for my omega 3, and I also think in, in terms of the oils you have, I think rapeseed is quite good omega 3, omega 6. Yeah, I think that's fairly good. good. But to keep in that 80-10-10 um, ratio, I think oils are pretty much the, the whole foods, plant based people who promote this diet, they don't like oils don't at all. all. Um, they're so refined, so you're losing like most of the nutrition. It's so easy to go too high in your oil, in your fats. Um, I meant to mention this, and I don't seem to have bullet pointed it, so I've missed it. So for my omega-3s, I like flax seeds and I like chia seeds. So flax seeds are about just better than three to one omega-3 to six, so in the, in the good ratio. Uh, and chia seeds are four to one. They're a lot more pricey though, so I tend to just use flax seeds. Uh, and then if you have a small amount of other nuts or seeds or like a little half to one avocado depending on your caloric needs, that's really your whole of that fats that you want. The thing is with oils, because obviously they, with seeds, you grind them up, you use them, so it's fresh. With an oil, it does go rancid like very, very quickly and, you know, again, it's not great for your health. Yeah. That's what I think. So I have three tablespoons of flax seeds and uh, like I say then I'll have like, maybe a small avocado or you know it's just a small handful of nuts or something as well but that's for 6,000 calories and that's keeping me in the 8 to 10 10 ratio so you can see if you need 2,000 calories it's you know maybe a couple of tablespoons of flax seeds would be enough and then I wouldn't recommend much more of a fat, so maybe half an avocado like. So cooking with olive oil is that enough? No, what would no. You, what would you use then? Uh, I steam fry everything and very quickly, at first it doesn't seem right, very quickly you get used to it and actually you prefer it and then when you have oil and stuff you think oh this is greasy and horrible okay. and then when you heat oils you know you're creating oxygen free radicals which is pro cancer okay. and uh, yeah honestly the, the way I eat now I've eaten always you know and I've never enjoyed my food half as much as I do now that's a beautiful thing but you need to eat that way for a couple of weeks or something I think just get rid of all the other things, which a lot of people, you know, not everyone's in a place to do that, so what you have to do, but if you don't have it, you just reset your taste buds and you appreciate real food, you know, your fruits and veggies. I used to hate tomatoes and now I smell an organic tomato and I can't go past, I have to eat like one of them and I love it, you know. So. Is that obviously not dry frying? Or is that you just Steam frying, so water. Yeah, yeah, and every so often give it a little stir. Add a little more water if you need to, but usually you don't, don't need to. But have it very, don't put too much water in, you know, so it's sort of steaming rather than boiling, if you see what I mean. Yeah, naughty. <laughs> yeah. You know, when they when so olive people think of olive oil as being healthy and like they think of it as being a whole food, but actually it's the most far removed thing from a whole food you can get, it's one element. And supposedly the vast majority of the nutrition goes down into the drain, like the, the water that drains off all the nutrients. Not all the nutrients, but the vast majority are in there. So if you're gonna have olives, I'd say maybe you have olives. But again, they're stuck in caustic soda for three to twelve months, which is the stuff you unblock your drains with to take out the bitterness. I'll have a few now and again for a change, but I, you know, yeah. just I make it a rarity, and I prefer to have the olive. Um, what are avocados called? Avocados. <laughs> <laughs> I make yeah, little nuts and seeds. Yeah. Um, Paul, should you be limiting the amount of fruit that you eat because of no. the No, I think you should smash in as much fruit as you can. So again, so species specificity. So, cool, that was a good word, wasn't it? <laughs> so in nature. If an animal looks like a horse, if it's a zebra, a mule, a donkey, it'll eat grass and root vegetables. If it's uh, whatever size a cat is, it'll eat meat. All hummingbirds drink nectar. And again, anthropoid primates, they eat, most often eat 90% fruit, 
except gorillas that can't get high enough to get enough fruit, but interestingly in captivity they choose to eat 90% fruit. The rest is mostly leafy greens, which is kind of the minerals. And I think that's why we have the thing where we like to eat savoury, then sweet, savoury, then sweet, so it's kind of vitamins, then minerals. I think that's an inbuilt kind of thing for us to get all our nutrition. Um, so yeah, it's not good to think in terms of individual nutrients. So yeah, refined sugar is a no-no because it's not got any nutrition with it. It's acidifying, which leads to disease. But the sugar in fruits comes with fiber, with the rate where we're finding nutrients in, in vegetable, in plants, sorry, they say that we've probably got 100,000 nutrients yet to discover. It's just so jam-packed. And um, it works as a symphony, you know, and it's all, it's all there, what we need. Um, and when you monkey around with it and put in loads of calcium from a tablet or loads of refined sugar, yeah, that's going to calcify your organs, it's going to make you acidic and promote like, candida and all sorts. But if we uh, just eat what we've been born to eat, what we've been eating for the past 25 million years. Yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. Thank you. And I have one more question. What about glycemic index? So is that something that you... I, I thought that was something. And interestingly, the man who invented the glycemic index is now saying go vegan. So that's something. I don't know his name, so I can't reference him, but he recently said that. And um, if you just had one food in isolation first thing in the morning, I think the glycemic index would kind of matter for that meal. But I think as the day goes on, and we don't tend to eat things in isolation, so it's going to affect. Um, and you know, as a bodybuilder, I was told fruit makes you fat. You know, all these rules that are law, the last two or three years I've broken all of them, and all this happened is my health is really you know, flourished. So, uh, I've gone off track now, so I can't remember the point we were making, but uh, it's all lies. Okay. It's all lies. <laughs> <laughs> Man in the black. <laughs> um, so, um, there's some good resources. Like I say, I got most of my information initially from the China study, which is an amazing book. It is, there is a PDF for free online somewhere, I'll have to look it up. But you can, you can read that for free. Um, I'm a big fan of Dr. Michael Gregor, whoever mentioned him. Nutritionfacts.org, uh, just thousands of videos and just showing, like, he's a research scientist and a doctor, uh, and his, for free, his passion is, like, kind of me, really, to show the world, you know, all these facts, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's all on there. He basically looks at all the papers that come out, finds out, oh, who funded that? Oh, meet and dear and yeah, they would say that. And, you know, um, but all the ones that he thinks are relevant, he, sh he tells you why. And, and he, you know, he uses the information himself and you see him with his family, giving them the hibiscus tea because it's got all the antioxidants to keep them topped up between meals. Uh, he's attached his desk to his treadmill because he found out if you go to the gym an hour a day, but you're sedentary, you're still really at risk for diabetes. So he's working away and, and walking at the same time. So I really, he doesn't seem to have any vested interest and, in, you know, and like I say, I'm following his advice and everyone I know who's doing it is, is flourishing. Um, well, what are, how many meals a day do you eat? Uh, say, for example, if you're on a 2,000 calorie diet, like an average diet for a female or male, yeah. would you eat three meals a day and a snack in between? Or I don't think it really matters too much. I mean, you don't want to leave it too long between meals. But at one point, I was eating eight meals a day because I was told that's what you had to do as a bodybuilder to keep your protein like synthesis up. Uh, and I've gone down to sort of three meals a day. I eat four meals a day now because it's just the most convenient, um, you know, it's just the quantity and yeah. So, but not really too much. Maybe, maybe th three meals minimum, though, no, I'd say. Oh, it's more than juicy, man. Like, it's like, so if you're having a smoothie where everything's intact, I guess that's different, but if you're juicy. I, I will point out about apples, all the nutrition is in the skins. So, it, um, I think the antioxidant action is similar for sugar water and apple juice. There's no antioxidant a action in the, in the apple juice. So if I'm going to use, I sometimes use juice as a base for my smoothie, but I'll eat the, I'll eat the apple skin sort of. Yeah. Hello, Baz. I'm eating again. Good. <laughs> so I have to drink, well, when I put all my things into chronometer, it tells me, because obviously there's water in your food, but it tells me I have 10 litres of fluids a day. If I don't drink like a, a pint or two of 
you know, if I have a pint or two of water or less, I feel really dehydrated and tired and sluggish. Um, because glycogen, so blood sugar, holds three parts water for one part glycogen. So it's basically filling me up, making me look more monstrous. Look at that vegan gains! And uh, yeah, so to be well, you, you, you should go by your own feel, but some people say you should pee clearly 10 times a day, and if not, you're not really pro properly hydrated. No, I'll do more. Oh, I do that e easily. Yeah. Easily. Young lady in there, on the right there. Would you say that there's a, 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 a good time to exercise? In terms of the day, is yeah. it a better time to exercise or not? I go out running in the morning. Yeah. I'm conscious that I don't eat anything before I run. I yeah. have a, a coffee yeah. and a go. It depends on like what you're trying to do, etc. But you should fuel your workout. Yeah, that's one I'm thing. Yeah. Um, and they, they, people used to say, "Oh, you'll burn more fat like that." But the latest science says, "No, that's, you don't." Okay. Uh, but you're not fuel. And then like you're fueling like the rest of your day, which isn't as active. So it's yeah. a bit. Uh, yeah, it's and also, it's not very often. But if people are going to have a heart attack from training, it's always pretty much always in the mornings. Oh, yeah. It's a lot more regular. <laughs> uh, for weight training, by the evening, if you've had two or three meals, as opposed to none or one, again, you're more volumised, you've got blood sugar, you've got the associated water in your muscles, so you're a lot stronger, so you're getting a better workout, burning more calories. So if I'm doing it in the morning, would you say there's something that I should maybe have before I go out that's obviously not too heavy? Because my yeah, you really... Ideally, ideally, it wants to be one and a half, two hours before you train. If it's just going to be an hour, I, that is a case where I might use fruit juice, to be honest. Yeah. Maybe with um, a little protein powder in there. Again, it's not a whole food, so, you know, but... Yeah. You could, um, you could make a smoothie with fine ground oats. Okay. Yeah, so that would absorb a bit quicker. Yeah. Interestingly, I put into chronometer today because I was just researching, making sure I had everything straight for this talk. And I put in the amount of oats I eat in a day, which I now put into my smoothies with the fruit. And it told me I had 50 grams of protein. You know, and that's a carb source for me, but I had 50 grams of protein in there. <coughs> and uh, all the aminos and um, conditionally. Um, the other amino, the essential ones, and conditionally, whatever that word I just said, ones. <laughs> my brain's going, I need a few more carbs, I just trained before I came in, I think I'm running out. But all, my, all the protein was, people say, oh, plant protein's not complete. All the aminos, the essential ones, were complete bar one, which was at 89%, and then when I put my flax seeds in, boom, it was all there. And that's just in my uh, fats and carb sources that I look at. So that's before I even start. Yeah. Just sort of just finished now. Just yeah, I think we're about there. Any questions? Give me a call, give me a text, give me an email. Thank you. Thank you.